morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm back here at Sioka Chevrolet of Princeton to check out a brand new 2023 Chevrolet Traverse High Country. Let's dig in. All right, on the front end, and again, my apologies for any road noise coming from Route 1, but again, this dealership is right on Route 1, so there might be a lot of background noise, so my apologies for that. We get to the front end of this beautiful Traverse, and we have that big bow tie right in the middle, silver trim around the, uh, the grill. We have LED turn signals, LED headlights, LED daytime running lights with that split look with the headlight down below and the turn signal up above. Let me know what you think of that split action on the lights. We have flat black around the lower portion of the grill, but overall a really nice looking design on the front end of this Traverse. Wheel and tire set up on the 2023 Traverse High Country. We have a 20 inch wheel, silver with gunmetal accents, that Chevy bow tie in the middle. You got you got uh, standard brake and rotor package which with large calipers for, for stopping power, which this SUV needs as it's pretty darn heavy. Tires, we have Continental all-season tires on here, 255 on the width, a 55 series sidewall, 20s, all four corners, all-wheel drive. Full side profile on the Traverse. This is a three-row mid-size SUV. The color here is iridescent pearl, which really pops in the sun, especially that pearl color in the white paint. So it's not just plain white, it has a nice deep pearl look to it. I'm not sure if it comes across that way on the camera, but very, very nice. We are body color along all the trim around the fenders, or excuse me, around the wheel wells, which I like. We're color matched on the side view mirror, LED turn signals, 360 degree camera is right underneath. We have a chrome on the door handles instead of body color. Let me know how you feel about that extra chrome. A lot of chrome around the window treatments as well, or excuse me, the uh, windows as well. Left side fuel filler cap. Up top, color matched shark fin antenna. And then we have a oversized sunroof, two panel sunroof on this one. Rear end of the Traverse. We don't have much of a, of a roof spoiler, so we have that windshield wiper down on the lower part of the glass. Chevy bow tie in the middle, some nice silver trim around that. We have LED turn signals, LED tail lights down below, flat black around the exhaust, and we do have functional dual exhaust on this uh, Traverse, so let's take a listen. All right, what are we looking at under the hood of this Traverse? This is a 3.6 liter, naturally aspirated V6 engine, mated to a nine speed automatic transmission, making 310 horsepower, 266 pound feet of torque, MPGs, 17 in the city, 25 on the highway, 20 combined. The engine's minimum octane rating is 87, so you can run this on regular leaded gas, and you can also tow up to 5,000 pounds with this Traverse. All right, we are inside of this 2023 Chevy Traverse High Country. Before we get started with the interior, you're gonna to wanna to know, Mike, how much does this cost? Well, MSRP, the way this one is optioned, you're looking at $56,290. Let's check out the interior. Starting with the foot box, we have a nice large dead pedal, brake and accelerator, all rubber finish. Probably would like to see a little aluminum trim on these pedals since we are in the high country. We have the all season Chevy floor mats. We have a nice Chevrolet door sill plate to welcome you to the car, which is a nice touch. We have power seats for the driver and front passenger with lumbar, nice interior, black interior. We have some, looks like what looks like orange cross stitch along the uh, the seating very very nice high country embossed on the headrests for both the driver and front passenger 
but very nice looking. Door panels, we have nice soft touch material up top. I like this uh, fingerprint resistant black trim around the door handle and the switch gear. The, there's also flat black on the switch gear. The uh, driver side has two memory seat settings. So that's nice. As we move to the dash, we have, again, nice soft touch leather cross stitch. Down below, we have our glove box, nice and large. Infotainment system time, what are we looking at here? This is an eight inch GM infotainment system. It's a touch screen and we do have nice response to the touch, which is nice. We can go to home. We can flip through our, our uh, home settings. We do have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, Wi-Fi hotspot, driver profiles, the whole schmear here in this eight inch. It's not as big as some of the other ones that we've seen, but it's integrated into the dash very nicely, which I like. And frankly, for me, eight inches is fine. Let me know um, about the infotainment as far as screen size. We come down further. Here are our uh, controls to go through the infotainment system without using the touch screen. And a little bit further down, we have our dual climate control action as well as ventilated three-stage and ventilated three-stage heated seats for both the driver and front passenger, which is a nice touch. Again, here is our auto climate control where we can set the climate however we would like. We'll do that now. When we sync it up, you can hear it turning on and running. It is a little cool morning. So this is a little noisy, so we will try to turn this down as best we can. But that's how that works. Down below here, we have a 12 volt and we have two USBs for connectivity right there as well as a slot for an SD, wireless charging. Here is the gear shift to go through this nine speed automatic transmission, two cup holders. I like the silver trim around everything. I think that lifts up the interior, makes it look really nice. Here is our Chevrolet key fob, lock, unlock, remote start, pop the tailgate. We have a panic button, nice weight, Chevy bow tie on the back, looking good. Here we have our settings for our uh, all-wheel drive, whether we're going to be in two high, four high, and whatnot, trailer uh, setting. And here's your uh, auto stop start off for the engine and your lane keep assist on or off right here. Nice armrest with the stitching, which I think looks nice. We open this up. We have a removable tray there and then some nice storage inside the uh, center console with lighting. All right, backup camera time. We put this in reverse and we have a nice clear backup camera with trajectory with the 360 on the left side. You can adjust your camera angles down here just in case you're in a tight spot or you need a different view. Very, very nice and clear. Steering wheel, nice leather wrapped steering wheel, nice 10 and two notches. We have the Chevy bow tie on the horn button, a fairly plain horn button, some stitching to match the interior might be nice here. We have our heated steering wheel right here. And then we have our cruise control settings over here and our telephone and voice commands on the right. The stocks right here, we have uh, our bright lights, turn signals on the right, our settings for both windshield wipers. Down on the left, you can set your headlights as well as brighten and dim the dash. Had to open the door to show you where the tailgate button is to open the tailgate from the driver's side. This is down by the door pocket. You have a max open three quarter or off. So you can set that however you would like and push it and pop the uh, tailgate. So I like the way they have that set. And also this comes with that premium Bose sound system. And now, we go to our dashboard, which is a, di a digital analog combo. We have analog gauges for our tachometer, fuel level, coolant temperature, uh, battery uh, life, 
And then in the center, we have that large digital display. Right now it's set on your speedometer, but you can move through and that's gonna give you other information such as average gas mileage, rain to tank, range to tank, tire pressure, and that sort of thing. So it's a nice digital uh, analog combo. Let me know what you think about that or whether you think it should be all digital. Overhead console, nice LED lighting here in the Traverse. We have our controls for our dual panel moonroof, which is nice. This button here, if this is pushed and uh, the orange light is off, then the lighting will come on when you open, open the door and go off when you close the door. So that is a nice touch. Takes a little while, but off it goes. And then here's a shot of this dual panel moonroof from the inside. There's panel one over the driver and then panel two in the back over the rear passengers. So a nice touch. We also have this really nice digital rear view mirror. Nice and clear, love the camera, really cool. Also have the power fold mirrors on either side that will fold in when you lock the car. Another nice touch. All right, we are in the back of this 2023 Chevy Traverse. And what are we looking at? As far as room back here, I got tons of room. A lot of head space, even with this dual panel moonroof action, five foot 11, plenty of shoulder width room, plenty of knee space with this seat set for my driving position. Nice <clears throat> consistency of design front to back with the soft touch up top, <clears throat> flat black around the door handle and the switch gear. Nice captain's chairs, nice and wide, fits my arm really well. So overall, a really nice place to be in the back of this 2023 Traverse High Country. Center console for rear seat passengers. We do have electronic temperature in the back seat for climate for the rear seat passengers, which is nice. We have three-stage heated seats for both rear passengers, but no ventilated seats. At this price point, I'd like to see some ventilated seats in the back. Let me know what you think. We have two USBs and a home power source as well. So we got plenty of connectivity and power here in the back, we have nice leather uh, seat pockets behind the driver and front passenger, as well as, as I mentioned earlier, these nice captain chairs, armrests, nice and wide, very comfortable. All right, getting into the third row of this Traverse, what are we gonna do? We're gonna take this lever, pull it up, the seat folds flat, moves forward a little bit, just a little bit, now you got to do a little fancy footwork to get into the back. All right, now we're in the third row, and I got good headroom. I have some nice shoulder width room, but my knees are compromised back here in height. And with the seat full all the way up, unless I have shorter people in the mid row and they can move forward, I'm going to be compromised leg room as a full size adult. So third row, in my view, good for children, not so good for full size adults, but I do have a USB on either side in the third row, and a cup holder and a snack tray. So they got you covered for connectivity in the back. Plus I have two heat and air vents in the roof for the third row as well. So I should be comfortable back here. So that's a nice job. All right, rear tailgate time in the Traverse. In order to open it up, key fob will open it. You can also come back here to the bottom underneath the license plate, hit the button. Nice electric assist on the way up. Nice electric assist on the way down. Here are the carpeted floor mats that come with the car in case you don't want to use the all weather ones. We have our all weather cargo liner, which is nice. Open this up. Nice big area for storage with drain plugs so you can put ice in here and use it for a cooler, which is a nice touch. Tie downs on either side, which I like. 12 volt in case you need power in the back. And now we have our power fold seats. So we just have to hit the button and that third row will go down nicely, nice and fast as well. I've seen these a lot slower. That's nice and fast. With the third row down, you have plenty of room for those extra large items. Mid row will go down, but you have to go to either side door to get those to go fully down. And you may have to readjust them once you get the third row down so they won't hit the, fr the uh, front seats, depending on where your driver position is. And once you get those down, you'll even have more room for those really large items, but plenty of space just with the third row down. Nice job. All right, here is the window sticker. 
so you can see everything that is optioned into this 2023 Traverse High Country. And now, let's take our first spin. All right, we have come down to this back road, which we were here the other day with the aviator. And now we're going to give this a little test on how this pickup works in this naturally aspirated engine. So here we go. So a nice linear torque delivery out of this naturally aspirated V6. Obviously, the aviator had that twin turbo, so it was off the line a lot faster. But nice pickup, the 9-speed automatic transmission shifting quickly and smoothly to get the this Traverse up to speed. So, again, this is not a performance car. I have the all-wheel drive on, so we make sure we get the power to the ground. We're coming up to a hard right turn on the brakes. Serious body roll as I expected and then we're back off to the races down the road And again nice gear holding and nice shifting by this nine speed. So overall some nice Pickup here with this naturally aspirated engine. I love the linear torque delivery that it provides as all naturally aspirated engines do in this segment, you see a lot of new cars for 20, new SUVs for 2023 going to the uh, turbocharged four. Chevy is keeping the 3.6 liter V6, which I like. Uh, just like Kia has kept their 3.8 liter naturally aspirated V6 in the Telluride for 2023. So I think that's a good move. I like higher displacement engines, obviously, as you probably know. The ride here, very smooth. The suspension is well damped out here on the road. Turning is nice and easy. Steering is very light. Don't need to put a lot of effort into it at all. We have our lane keep assist that is keeping us in the road. Obviously, this Traverse comes with that full set of safety suite uh, technology, such as your blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, traffic nine, traffic sign recognition, you know, active collision braking alarm, all that good stuff goes into this Traverse for safety, which I think is nice. And I think pretty much all cars should have all that to make sure people are safe on the road as best as they can be. But as we come up to this right turn, we're gonna hang a right get off this busy road this road is always busy and uh, we'll do another acceleration and emergency brake test here in this traverse all right nobody's behind me three two one brake test very nicely done and we're now back to zero very nice <clears throat> so a nice smooth stop steering wheel didn't want to pull in either direction perfect nice brakes with decent acceleration this isn't going to be a world beater on acceleration uh, but you know it gets the car up to speed and that's really in this particular car that's all you're really going to need visibility in here is great i love that digital rear view mirror don't have to worry about any of the seats or anything getting in my way as far as visibility out the back front uh, windshield visibility is good great visibility out of the side glass big side view mirrors so i can see a whole lot around the car out of them Obviously, you got the 360 degree cameras as well, which is going to help when you're in a tight spot uh, or obviously with backing up. So they got all that covered. The dual panel moonroof is a really nice touch. I like how that looks. Let some nice light into the cabin so the cabin won't be as dark. So overall, I think Chevrolet has brought a, a, a nice 
quality product in this three row midsize SUV segment. Obviously the class leader in this segment right now is the Kia Telluride. Uh, obviously people are, are gonna, that are looking at this car are gonna be cross shopping it against Honda Pilot, Toyota Highlander, Kia Telluride, Ford Explorer, all those types of vehicles. Uh, right now class leader per car and driver's latest 2023 midsize SUV test is the Kia Telluride followed by the Hyundai Palisade. So the, the Traverse, uh, I believe, uh, was a mid-pack uh, performer in that test, but still in, you know, a decent performer. Pricing is pretty much the same. Fully loaded Telluride, it's gonna cost you about 55 grand. Fully, fully loaded Traverse, 56 grand. So pricing is about the same. So let me know what you would do in this segment. Is Traverse something you would put on your list to test drive? In your search, I would put it on my list to test drive. See it for yourself. See what you think about it uh, when you're looking for that midsize three-row SUV. Let me know what you're looking at. Let me know if this is something you would look at. I also, I want to thank Sioka Chevrolet of Princeton for allowing the channel access to this Traverse High Country. I'd like to thank all of you for watching the video today. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. Please also consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell so you'll never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.